Good morning, everybody. My name is Keith Salmon, and this is the Million Dollar Story series of Welcome Aboard. Um, I'm thrilled to have Ryan Dowdy on this morning from Kansas City, right? Yes. Excellent. And I'm in Santa Monica, mm -hmm. California. I talk about this all the time. I think it's incredible. Uh, I refer to it as the uh, my generation, the miracle was the moon landing. And I think this generation, the miracle is that we can talk to each other worldwide like this and have conversations. Pretty incredible. Super so. Fun. I was telling um, Ryan is a uh, I'm going to say that she's a sales and mindset coach, but she's so much more than that. It's impossible to the, the thing. The little ticker down below would be uh, would be going for a long time uh, if that were if that was if I was to type in everything. So I just wanted to just double check this one thing over here uh, real quick and good to go. So thank you so much, Ryan, for coming on today. I know you're really super busy, as you always are. Um, what I referred to Ryan as earlier today, I said uh, that uh, she is a super highway of information and inspiration. And I'm a student of Ryan's, and and so and and I I became uh, a very very scared to raise my hand in one of the classes. But once I did, I felt like wow, this is the place to come. And uh, and so uh, so if you don't mind, I, I know it's it's impossible mm -hmm. to say the one thing that you do because you do so many things. So so, so tell us awesome. a, tell us a tiny bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. So Keith, Keith prepped me with that. He was like, I referred to you as something this morning, but I'm not going to tell you what it is until you're on camera. And I'm like, oh gosh, what's going to come out of his mouth? So I'll take it. Super highway of information I'm okay with. Um, so yeah, I, I typically refer to myself as a sales coach because that's really my zone of genius is selling one-to-one. -one. But in growing a business, um, Keith, I became really good at organic lead generation. I became really good at human to human connection online. Um, I became really good at building a network and building community. Um, and on top of who I am professionally, I'm also a, a wife and a mom. Um, I have two littles, uh, a 16 month old and a three and a half year old and a 15 year old stepdaughter. Um, and so yeah, life is busy, life is crazy, but, but it's exciting. And my real passion is I, I have the pleasure of working primarily with women. Um, I, I trade, I get to work with Keith in, in another program which is fun for me because I don't always get to work with dudes and I actually really like it because men are action takers, not that women are, but men are a lot of fun to work with as well. Um, so for me, I, I have the distinct pleasure of helping women uh, learn how to sell in a, feel, a way that feels good to them, right? We have been taught that sales is gross and yucky and pushy and annoying. And all of us think all of these terrible things, you know, you've seen the movie Boiler Room and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and like the sales guy's always the bad guy, right? He's always the shyster. He's always, um, and so I, I really help women kind of retrain those thoughts and learn to, to connect and sell in a way that feels good to them. Right. Well, I think one of the reasons, um, I, from my point of view, I feel lucky to to be in the in the group and uh, that where I got to meet uh, Ryan. And uh, I think that in from my perspective, it's like because I know for a fact it's difficult for me to ask for help, to ask mm -hmm. for something, you know, to not be like the know-it-all. To, to mm -hmm. I'll do it myself. And I think stubbornness and pride is a big barrier in in our world. And um, so I appreciate that. You know, we weren't uh, banned from that room. I'm just <laughs> kind of teasing. But, Not at all. But what I did hear from you early, early on was uh, that you were a, a, a person with a plan, a person with a goal, and and um, I, I think you know I, I like to always say up front in the beginning of the of the broadcast here is that my million dollar story uh, idea is that I believe that everyone has a million dollar story, although I think a lot of people don't believe that they have one, or they don't know that they have one. And it's it's not a monetary million dollars. It's a story that's inside the heart here. It's a story that's inside your intellect. And it may be a hope and a dream that uh, combined with the right expectations and goals could become the dream vision that you've always looked for. And mm -hmm. people like Ryan are the people that are facilitate those things. And what I say, it's a, it's a game of synchronicity. It's mm -hmm. a game of if you are watching this at the right time and you hear the right story and you go, wait a minute, that's me. How, how did that happen? You may actually, it may actually, one conversation can change your life. And I firmly believe that it's happened to me. And, and so I love to know about your programs and your, yeah. you know, I know that you've got a lot of people in, in your, uh, I, is it your uncensored group? Is it your uncensored uh, sales group? So the is Facebook the group is ambitious women entrepreneurs mastering sales skills. That is actually the name of the Facebook group. Um, my you. brand is uncensored consulting um, and uncensored sales. And uh, to, to kind of give you that backstory where uncensored came from Keith was this idea. So I'm a rule 
follower, believe it or not. Um, I did everything I was supposed to do in life, right? You know, I went to college. Well, I finished high school. I got a scholarship to go play college volleyball. Um, I checked all the boxes. I graduated college. I got a job. I climbed the ladder. Um, and I, you know, I did all the things. I checked the boxes. I got a master's degree. I got married. I bought a house. I had kids. And I woke up at like 34 and was like, huh, this is it. huh? And so for me, it was really about like living life outside of the lines, about doing things that you want to do, not doing things that you were told you had to do, right? And again, I, I think that so many of us are, are in that place, right? Where we wake up one morning and we're like, how did we get here, right? I, I did all the things I was supposed to do. Like, I'm, I'm a good kid. Like, I followed, <laughs> I checked all the lines. Like, I was a good kid in high school, right? Like, I never got in trouble. I did get in trouble in college a few times because I was an athlete and I like to break the rules. But um, of course, it, I was just rebelling. But so I just woke up one morning kind of being like, this is, there's gotta be more, like, I can't do this for the next 35 years. I can't live the life that I'm living, which is the American dream, right? And so I really started looking for what is that place? How can I replace my income? How can I do work that I enjoy? How can I, you know, really figure out what I'm meant to do in life, right? Because I've always just done what I was told to do. And so it's been a really cool journey to kind of figure out who I am and what I want and what my purpose is. And I feel like probably about the time you came into my world, it's probably about the time that I really felt like I hit my stride when I knew like my purpose is to get women out of their nine to five and really doing work they enjoy. Um, because, and I don't know your thoughts on this, Keith, and I never, I don't ever want to vilify employers because I, I am one, right? Like I, I have employees, um, but I want to vilify the way the system is built. You know, like it's nobody wins in a nine to five when you commute to work an hour and you spend nine hours and you eat lunch at your desk. You only work for the three hours you're there. You take the commute home. Um, and so for me, the whole uncensored brand is about helping women draw their own picture, right? Like stop living life inside the box that we were put in and really, you know, draw your own picture, create your own life, create your own vision for yourself. So mm -hmm. that's no, my I thing. Agree. I agree with that. I, well, I think, you know, entrepreneurship is, is uh, hereditary. I think it's, it runs in families. I, 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 at least it did in, in my family. And I see that a lot. And I, I think that the nine to five, um, you know, it's sometimes it suits the person. And sure. sometimes it just it, it, but but the thing that I think that what what's really truly inspiring to to me about you is that um, it was interesting. I I play with the three three by five cards. You know, you would not mm -hmm. want to see how many of these I have running around over here. But I I was over there in this my catch all when I clean up my desk. I, all I do is I throw it on another desk, so it's all you know. It just sort of just migrates over there. But one that I hit today, and I, I actually brought it intentionally over to here. Um, it, it, it just all it said was rock bottom and and rock bottom is a part of a lot of people's stories mm -hmm. but it's not necessary i think a lot of people play that the rock bottom has to come in for you to make that transformative move um you're here to tell us that it's not necessary uh -uh. And, and and you know the nine to five the person who's got a burning desire to do something um it, those are the people that sometimes hit the rock bottom because right. they've got that burning desire. They just know it's just, they're eating them alive, but mm -hmm. they're stuck in the nine to five because of, you know, for, for whatever reason. Right. And um, you're here to tell us that it's, it's not necessary to go that route. Yeah. And, and if you can wake up one day and like I say, like today, you know, and I know that you've got a ton of people in your group, you've got a ton of people that you uh, affect and you have that. Um, if you lived it, you can teach it. And, and, and I, I truly believe that that's a huge part of it. And it's, it's, you're not making it up uh -uh. and, and, and that's, you're saving that rock bottom from a lot of people. I, I truly believe that. So that's, thank you. That's an awesome way to put it. I, I never really thought of that, but yeah. And I actually think that's probably an insecurity of mine is when it comes to storytelling. Right. And you know, it's always the hero's journey and what, what, like they tell you that there should be a rock bottom. And I'm like, I didn't have one. I just didn't like the story I was writing. Like I was just like, this, this is not the way this story ends, right? This is not the way this ends. And so, um, you know, th there wasn't a rock bottom for me, um, but there has been an incredible uh, journey of personal development and professional development and improvement of my life, not only my, my financial situation, but my relationships, um, my, uh, my view on life, even as a parent, right? Like, I feel like just the whole journey I've been on as an entrepreneur has made me just a better person um, on top of changing, you know, the actual circumstances that, you know, doing your own thing really does, which for us was time freedom, financial freedom and location freedom. Right, exactly. Well, I think, you know, the core of our existence on earth is being a good person. And, mm -hmm. you know, with that comes from the ability to do the things that you're talking about. Um, 
So again, thank you for, for that. Um, yeah. I wanted to uh, congratulate you and your city for being the Super Bowl champions. I thank you. Well, I'll take the congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> totally appreciate that. Uh, some, you know, sometimes I have uh, over here. I change this picture over here. Sometimes I have uh, movie posters I may have worked on, and uh, sometimes I have a beautiful photograph of Vince Lombardi. You know, of course, Vince Lombardi and um, Hank Stram paired off in the Super Bowl one and, and uh, the two uh, geniuses and, and coaching, I refer to Lombardi oftentimes about, you know, that's the core of the value of a, uh, the values of a man and the legacy building that that person decides to build for himself and the consequences of your actions and consequences, consequences are not all uh, um, negative consequences right. are positive. Also, they are uh, um, displays of your actions. So sometimes he's up here for inspiration. Um, and I think that, you know, of course, leadership is part of that. And and you being a leader um, is sometimes uh, it's kind of an incredible responsibility. How, how do you feel that? Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I don't necessarily. It, it's actually interesting because, again, I, I sometimes have I tell people I have like corporate PTSD um, and like what what they tell us a leader is. Right. And we think that leader is a manager or a leader is someone who tells you what to do or, you know, and for me, I've really had to learn that you can be a leader just by inspiring others, right? Like that's really where I think my, my building a community have, I've become so successful at that Keith is because I don't try to tell people what to do. I don't tell people there's one right way to do things. I, you know, I really try to inspire people into action. I try to give them hope. I try to give them actionable ideas. Um, and so for me, that's actually taken away some of the pressure of leadership because I don't have to do anything. I just have to be. Right? Like I can right. just be myself and, and lead others because those are the gifts that God gave me, right? Is to be able to inspire people, to be able to communicate information clearly, to be able to, you know, research a topic, put it into action and then explain it to somebody else how I did it. Um, and those, that's just a skill set I'm blessed to have. And so I think of leadership more as, uh, as inspiration, um, as motivation, as being willing to share the good with the bad. Um, I think that's also why my community thrives is because I do, I tell them the bad stuff. Like I tell them the frustration. We talk about the, the, the brain drama. We talk about the struggle. We talk about the failed launches. We talk about the failed offers. We talk about all the bad things and not just talk about the good things. And I think that's what makes a good leader right? Because we can all champion all the amazing things that we do. Uh, but I think true leadership really has to be with being willing to share behind the curtain and say like, hey, you know, the people that you're watching win Super Bowls and do all those things, they failed, right? They've lost. They've, you know, you, Kansas City in particular, right? We lost oh. a lot, you know, mm -hmm. before we got mm -hmm. there. Um, and to me, that's true leadership is, is being willing to keep going and being willing to share that journey. Right. Those failures can make you stronger and it builds character and, and, and you, you know, leading by example, I think is, is really, um, is all we can do. You know, I think that I, I don't think it's effective to tell people what to do. You know, yeah. if you're not ready to, you know, if, unless you need that, you know, some people do need that, but, mm -hmm. uh, I think that if you don't, if you don't find it in yourself to pick yourself up and, and go in and, and, do it from the inside, uh, you're going to, it's almost like policing. It's, it's like parenting in a way. Parenting mm -hmm. is like, if you do this, do this, do this, is there, there's going to be a rebellion there somewhere. Uh -huh. And and sometimes that can be, uh, it, it can put you out of business. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So this is a good time uh, and a bad time in, in the country. And mm -hmm. so the uh, in the world, honestly, and uh, I think a lot of uh, folks have said, how could this happen to me? I mean, I, I literally went through about only a couple of days you know, and I said, how could this happen to me? I'm just hitting my stride. How can right. this happen to me? And I said, wait a second. <laughs> what a self-centered way of thinking. And uh, this whole thing is happening to all of us. Mm -hmm. And and so the advantage of the entrepreneur to, you know, I, I, I think that that's, you know, you being um, willing to come on a, the Million Dollar sh Show, the Million Dollar Series is uh, a story series. I can't even uh, pronounce the name of my own show. Um, but the is the idea that I call it, um, you know, it's adaptation, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's survival, it's pivoting, it's all of those kind of stereotypical uh, words for it. But you were uh, doing this before pandemic. And mm -hmm. you, uh, and, and so was I. And I think once I got out of like the three or four days of going, Mm -hmm. they're, they're going to crush me. You know, I have a production business that they, they shut down. And you know, honestly, I've had more production jobs for just kind of laying low uh, yeah. than, 
um, and and taking this you know e even faster. So I, I just wanted to um, just comment on that. And and of course, do you, do you see a ripple effect in people going? You know, this can be for me. And if if their mindset is correct and go, this isn't out of uh, an emergency. This is like this is the 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 right time to come into this sort of zone. Mm -hmm. um, so has that yeah. been good for you? Yes, our business has blown up um, since all this happened because I, I have the blessing of working with really new entrepreneurs, again, many of them coming out of a nine to five and they have been sold the same thing I was sold is that this is a safe space. We go, we get a job, we get a salary, we get a 401k, we get benefits, like that's the safe place, right? And there's all these crazy entrepreneurs over here that they're fun to watch, right? We really like them, they're entertaining, but we don't do that because that's that's scary and that's risky. And I think what happened to it for a lot of people is a couple of things. One, they realized that their belief of how safe they were gone, right? And a lot of people too, just they had the time you know, to when you when you don't have to commute and you don't have to, you know, do all those things. You don't spend all your time in meetings that are a big fat waste of time. You can dedicate a couple hours a day to growing a business, right? And so that I found a lot of people used the, the women that I get to serve used this time to, you know, collect themselves, right? We, we all fell apart for a couple of days. I, I felt the same way. Like I literally, you know, was just, I think I just hired like my first like full-time employee. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is all going to go to hell in a handbasket and I'm going to have to go get a job and this is going to be terrible. Like I went through it for sure. Um, and it, just like you, it was like three or four days and it was like, okay, you know, this is actually an opportunity to help people do something that they've probably had on their heart for a while. And I've had all the reasons why they did, they couldn't or didn't, right? They're busy with work and they're busy with this and they're busy with that. And I don't have time and I don't know how, or this is safer and entrepreneurship would never work for me. And so now I've got all these people who are, um, you know, really taking advantage of that extra time. So for us, it's been a blessing for our business. Um, and also I serve online entrepreneurs, most of who serve, of, serve other online entrepreneurs where we have, we, we didn't have to pivot and adapt, right? This is the way we've been communicating for mm -hmm. years at this point mm -hmm. in the game, right? This is um, very normal for us to have a conversation in two different time zones. And uh, I just did an interview a couple of weeks ago for a guy in New Zealand. And he was like literally in like tomorrow morning while we were talking. And I was like, this is just so wild, but it wasn't weird for either one of us. So I feel very blessed in that way. I'd already built an online community. I already understood online marketing. Um, and so for me, the biggest part of my business that was really impacted was I do, I did do a lot of speaking. Um, I got on a lot of stages, talked to a lot of people. That was a big part of credibility and authority building for me. Um, but I also learned that it really wasn't nearly as necessary as I thought that it was. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been, um, I have been immensely blessed to have my business thrive during this time and to help other people do the same. Right. I think, uh, you know, the fear factor comes in and, and, you know, you, especially, um, people who maybe couldn't pull that trigger that I always refer to that burning desire when people have that, uh, mm -hmm. they just can't pull the trigger. They can't, you know, there's too risky. It's too right. this or it's too that. And, and then, uh, the longer it goes, you know, hopefully, you know, that's why we keep just showing up. I know I have, I have like in my group, I have a zoom call, you know, honestly, in that, uh, program that I met you in, it was pivotal for me yep. in before I even signed up, but I got on a Zoom call, a private mm -hmm. Zoom call, and I, I, I kind of changed my uh, uh, makeup. I'm like usually the quietest guy in the room, but I, I just raised my hand and then I figure out what I'm going to say after I raise my hand. And, and, but it changed everything for me. So mm -hmm. I show up for that Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. I show up and, and somebody literally from who I knew this uh, in, I'm in Santa Monica in, saw me pop on my little promo this morning and um that's where i coined the term super uh in, super highway of information and yeah. and he 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 jumped on that zoom call i hadn't talked to him in two years and okay. he he ran past my office this morning he ran past it saw my live that's where that synchronicity comes in and mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden i was ready to go to uh the uh audience of of none but for replay and uh mike popped on i'm like you know this is what it's all about mm -hmm. and, and 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 finding out about where uh you know how his pivoted how everything in the world has changed and he's into emergency uh emergency services for like the hurricanes he was just down in uh, lake charles okay. and, and it, anyway but just the idea that we keep showing up we mm -hmm. keep showing up we provide evidence that it's possible mm -hmm. and and that's what that's what leadership is you know right. you lead through lead through example and um 
I'm thanking you a lot because I, I believe in your service uh, to our community. And, and that's what I, I try to, you know, so you're, a, I'm, you're a leader to me and, and it's like, a, uh, it's like ancestry.com. It's all related. It's all kind of, right. uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that, uh, you, you, you know, sometimes when we talk about our own stories, it's like, it seems like it's not that interesting to people. Right. You think it from the inside, well, nobody might be interested in, in that, but um, could you tell, I mean, being a, a collegiate athlete is mm -hmm. not an easy thing to do, mm -hmm. but you kind of don't really talk about it that much. You want to talk about what that was like and you know, what that, how that shaped mm -hmm. some of your disciplines, maybe that, or, or getting in mm -hmm. trouble in college or whatever that means. Does that have, does yeah. that have any effect on, on how, what shaped, how you shaped your future? Hundred percent. Yeah. So I played. I played college volleyball. Um, I got a, a a full ride to a small D one school. Um, we were awful. Uh, we went like three and twenty one my freshman year. Um, it was crazy. But I mean, we trained hard. And um, I and again, I for me, very much. I think everyone should play sports. I think everyone should play sports and wait tables. Like, I think those are two things in life. Like, even if you're bad at sports, you should play. And even if you're bad at waiting tables, you should do it because of the life lessons uh, that are learned, you know? And for me, it was about losing. It was, I mean, we were terrible. We went three and 21. We lost a lot. We didn't stop showing up, you know, practice wasn't canceled because we lost. We didn't take our toys and go home because we lost, you know, we ran harder, we practiced harder, we did more drills, we spent more time in the weight room, right? You know, after my first season, coach went back to the drawing board and was like, we need to train harder in the off season. We're not ready. These people are bigger, stronger, faster. How do we get there? And so I honestly believe that like athletics is such an important part of um, learning life skills in general, but definitely is the perfect analogy for entrepreneurship um, because that's what it's about, right? Like, uh, I was still, and here's what's really interesting about this, and we can talk about the NFL too. Like the players who play for the worst team still get paid millions of dollars and they lose, right? But as entrepreneurs, we show up, we get four no's, nobody watches our lives, you know, we have a failed launch, um, you know, we, all the other things, and we're like, oh, I'm not cut out for this, right? Mm -hmm. But again, as, as a full ride scholarship athlete, I still got my scholarship, even though we sucked. I still got my money. You know, like when it comes to football players, even the guys who play on the worst team still get paid. So I think it's just, to me, that's just the perfect parallel. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was a rebellious stage that I went through. The coach, like the fun part of the story, and I don't know if I've ever told the story. Um, I, the coach who recruited me left. So when I was a, a senior in high school, she recruited me um, and she moved to Connecticut. And the coach who came in, um, she and I now as an adult, um, I realized are very similar which is why we did not mesh well. Um, but we did not mesh well at all. Personality wise, like there was just a lot of fire. Um, she was young. I was young. It was a hot mess. So I actually wound up playing uh, my first two seasons. I played my freshman and sophomore season uh, and then decided not to play. And because I was just like, this is, I, I likened it to the idea of I, I had a job that paid very well. I hated it. I was miserable. She took, she didn't take the sport was no longer fun for me anymore. I wasn't having fun. Training wasn't fun. I hated going to practice. I hated going to the gym. Um, and so I quit and my mother was furious and, um, she was like, well, you either need to come home or you need to go find the financial aid office. And I was like, I think I know where that is. And, <laughs> um, and I applied for financial aid and I finished college in three years. And, um, but like, it was, it was a huge turning point for me. Um, cause it was, I'd been an athlete my entire life. My parents put a basketball in my hand when I was eight. Right. Um, so, you know, and then I started playing volleyball when I was 12 and I trained to go to college and, and all the things. So like, you know, I woke up at 20 with, this brand new identity that I didn't know anything about. And so I had to kind of relearn like, who am I without the sport? And it was, it was a wild ride. It was very interesting. Um, but now, I, I mean, I still, I still think about it often. Um, the good things in my life that happened because of it and the bad things, right? Like the student loan debt, you know, that I would not have had to have had I just keep playing ball, but I think it would be a totally different human as well. Like, you know, so it's that butterfly effect of the choices we make. Right. Yeah. Those decisions are, I mean, the, those decisions are, really life-changing right. at, at such a young age. I, I put up a post the other day, just, uh, you know, because I've learned to do that if there's something on my mind. And I just right. said, I was thinking about it. And I said, how far away are you from your hometown right now? You know, how far, you know, how far did you move away? And, and it sort of like was one of those things, like, I realized I came to California 
from the Midwest of Wisconsin okay. um, at, at 22. And I never went back. And mm -hmm. it's like, how do you make those kind of life changes, changing decisions with that lack of experience? And but many, many of us do. And I was surprised by the comments. And then there were a few that said they went out and then they came back. And those are incredible decisions as well. I did. I went to college. I grew up here in Kansas City. I went to college in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, and then I moved from New York to Florida with a girlfriend after college. Um, and at 25, I came home. Um, so I'm actually about 45 miles away from my hometown. Um, so, but I did. And it was, it was hard to come home. Like to me, it, it like almost felt as if I was admitting defeat um, by coming home. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I, I'm close to home as well. I grew up here, but I did. I left for seven years. And I also, I believe that too. Like, I think we all need to leave home for a little while. Um, my sister did not leave home and I did. And it was very different kind of the trajectory because I just naturally had to be more independent, right? Like dad couldn't come over and like help me move from out of my dorm, right? Like he was 1200 miles away. I had to do that on my own um, or find somebody else who could. So um, it's just very different. The personality traits that we developed in our early twenties that my sisters were very different because she was 30 minutes away from mom and dad. It was interesting. Right. Right, right. I, I knew that when I went to school, I, it was it was it was interesting. You know, I took those. It, uh, everyone wants to give you their two cents and their advice. You know, and yeah. and I remember my grandma. My grandma said, uh, of all the things, she said, just make sure that you have fun. You know, yeah. they all came up to uh, school. I went to school in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Believe it or not, it it you know it changed my life because I met met my you know mentor in the film business. There oh. would have never happened. And, but she said, have, make sure you have fun. And then when I left home to come to California, I get, you know, we did, we were not a hugging family, but my dad uh, gave me a hug and said, you can come back anytime. Oh yeah. It was, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty awesome. And, and, you know, at the moment you're just kind of trying not to cry and not trying to be, you know, trying to be prideful and stubborn and whatever. But then, uh, you know, when I was down to my last hundred bucks, I got my first job and it was uh, another, my, my second mentor, you know, of course my okay. mom, my dad, I should say my third, cause my dad was my first mentor. Sure. Um, but, um, what I, I, I am also inspired by, um, you know, I think one of the things that, I try to try to talk to my people about is, is uh, this the notion that this is an overnight success uh, mm -hmm. business, and that uh, I think that if you pray for anything, you should pray for patience, mm -hmm. and uh, and and so, so it you know there's this feeling that um, you need to do four podcasts and YouTube, and you need to do Facebook ads, you need to do all this stuff, and you need to hire ten people, and you need to. Uh, get 300 people in your group in five minutes. And, 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 you know, it gets a little bit confusing and a little bit uh, uh, tough to even keep track of. So yeah. the idea that um, what was really beautiful about your story in that you were, uh, you know, you obviously can correct me on this, but what I took away is that you had this plan mm -hmm. and that you did this plan while you were still working and you did it, it you sort of like, undercover did this plan in some in kind of a way that that uh but it didn't take five minutes to do you had to really really work at it and i, and I think that i think that uh that message is important for some of the new people that do come in and they may be on their last financial you know my seeker demographic is who i call them you know sometimes they're really in trouble right and 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 anyway i if you wouldn't mind telling us just a little bit about, cause that's the inspiring story is that you, you didn't, it wasn't reflexive and desperate and crazy. I mean, it's, it was, it takes some uh, planning. Yeah. So I kind of full story, I started, um, it was July, 2017. I was, I was uh, selling wine for a, like an MLM. So I had like my full-time job, but I was in an MLM, um, a network marketing company selling wine. And I went to wine camp is what we called it. It was our annual convention. It was in Las Vegas. It was magical. We had so much fun. Um, but there was a speaker um, there. Guy's name was Rory Vaden. He wrote the book, Take the Stairs. And it was a really great, you know, and his whole model, and I'm going to butcher the quote, was basically like, you know, success is not... Um, is not bought, it's rented. And the rent is due every day. It's kind of the thought process. Like the rent is due every single day. It's not just, you can't just buy it, right? Like you're, you're renting it and you have to earn it every day. Something along those lines. Um, and so I read his book and 
um, went back to, you know, my life and I was still selling wine and all this stuff, but that was really what planted the seed. Um, and then I just started listening to professional development books again. Like it was kind of that thing that got me started. And I, I was listening to Jen Sincero's, um, you are a badass, which is a great book. Um, but she talked about coaching and how everybody needs a coach. And I was like, that's really interesting. Cause I didn't, that was not part of my world at all. Right. Like I was in the corporate world. We didn't have coaches. We didn't do that. Um, you know, it was your, your manager was the person who was responsible for mentoring you and all this other stuff. And, um, I remember thinking like, you know what I needed a coach is when I was like 24 years old and I didn't know which way was up and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to have difficult conversations. I didn't know how to ask for a raise. I didn't know how to manage up. Um, I didn't know how to ask for what I wanted, right? Like all my girlfriends were in the same boat I was. My mom, you know, I was first generation college graduate. So my mom wasn't really super helpful when it came to career. She was very helpful when it came to life. So actually my first iteration of my business, Keith, was um, I was gonna do be like a career and life coach for early stage for women early on in their careers, like women in their early 20s. And so I spent eight months. Well, so that was the summer of 2017. I hired my first business coach in October of 2017 that taught me, introduced me to online entrepreneurship. Like that was all, I was like, how do I get this out of my brain onto a piece of paper and convince people to pay me for this? <laughs> it was really what I was hoping to learn. Um, and that's when I got really introduced to entrepreneurship. And so I spent like all of 2018 banging my head up against the wall with that business and realizing two things. Um, one, that that demo doesn't yet know they have a problem. Um, and two, they're broke. <laughs> God love them. So I was like, okay, well, that idea, let's scrap that. And so then it wasn't until the summer of 2018. So now we're a full year later when I realized that, like, no, I just need to take the gift that I currently have, which is sales. It's what I do. I lead sales organizations um, and take this into the world. And then I thought that I was going to be helping companies um, like businesses, startups, that sort of startups for my GM. I worked in startups. I loved them. And I thought that's what I was going to do was go help startup CEOs. Um, build out sales organizations so they could get out of their role as a salesperson. And um, so I did that. I got a couple of clients doing that. But then what I wound up doing in, in, is building a community of women, again, just through networking, who all were kind of in that freelance space, building businesses, and their businesses were really, really struggling. And through networking and connecting and talking to people and doing all the stuff, I was like, there's this giant gap. No one is teaching this. Like, no one is teaching you, how do I start a conversation with a stranger without being a weirdo, right? Like, nobody is teaching that. How do I, you know, start a conversation and build a relationship and turn it into a sales conversation um, without, you know, being awkward or uncomfortable? And then how do I ask for money and all this stuff that nobody was teaching? And so, now we're at the end of 2018 and I'm like, okay, now I know what I want to do. So we're here full year and a half later. And I'm like, all right, I got it. This is it. And then I, and I'm still broke, right? Well, not, I mean, I'm working. So I still have the money for my job, but I've, I've invested heavily in my business. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs and um, still trying to figure out what to do with it. And so then it was January of 2019 where it really started to take off. That's when I invested um, in learning how to launch, how to build community, all that different stuff. And that was where it really took off. So in January, 2019, I had a Facebook community of like 246 people. I was probably related to like half of them or they were my friends. Um, and then we built that community. Now here we are in October, wild of 2020. It's a community of over 5,000 people. Um, and I have sold one thing primarily it's all in the sales arena i've done some like one-on-one -on -one coaching and stuff like that but it's all been under one umbrella um but it's been now i mean three years to get here um so no it was not an overnight success and so that was 2019 and i was pregnant at the time and i literally i did have some like you were like there was no desperation i'm like there was some desperation because yeah. I, I physically had a, a human attached to me and i knew that i did not want to go back to work after she was born and I knew that I needed to replace my corporate salary before that happened. I was the breadwinner in my family. Um, and it was just not an option for us to go without for a while. Um, and I had racked up a considerable amount of debt trying to make this business thing work. So I had to pay that off. And um, so there was a small, it felt desperate at the time. It may not have looked desperate, but it felt it, Keith. Um, it really did. And um, it yeah, kind of rubber hit the road in May and Georgia was born in June and um, I kicked off in July with like my first 12 month program and all this other stuff. And, um, it's just been the craziest year, 15 months since that happened. Geez, 16 months. I always kind of benchmark like George is how old. So that's how old my business is really. Um, and so that's kind of my whole story, but no, it, it took a while. I mean, I spent eight months. I tell people like getting ready to get ready. Cause I thought I was going to do this coaching thing. And I, you know, this career coaching and life coaching and, um, 
So yeah, it took a long time. And then once I said it, even, even once I started doing it, I knew what I wanted to do. It still took another eight months before my business was sustained, was, was making enough money for me to quit my job. Right. Well, that, that's awesome. I appreciate you telling us that because that's, uh, that is, I think there's this, uh, this uh, misconception sometimes that because they see a snapshot, they go, right. that, that person has what I want. Mm-hmm. I want it now. And I want it now. And, and that's, that's a tough thing uh, for people to, to kind of get a, get a handle on. They, 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 you know, that's what advertising, some sorts of advertising are all about. It's like, how can I look like that person? How can I have that, per, that car? How can I have that, what that person has? Well, are you willing to do something about it? Yeah. You know, that's, that's uh, so that's, I think, uh, you know, critical. And, and I, I appreciate that you, you do share that in your okay. teachings and you share about, um, you know, yeah, you need the numbers, you need the numbers, but are the numbers, you know, if the numbers came in, in five seconds, they probably aren't very good numbers. Right. You know, you know, yeah. like you said, I, I loved how you said that, you know, 246 people and half of them were my family or my friend. <laughs> and right. I, I totally, you know, when I, when I look down the list of, of, of what that means is, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what you have to, that's what you do, you know, cause it's what you have to do. Um, well, that's awesome. You know, there's a there's a lot of uh, peaks and valleys, but you know, the goals. I think the goals and the execution plan that you put put together are really important for people to understand that that. Uh, and if it's not, I mean, I love that you said these the young people, the yeah. young. Uh, and uh, wait a minute, those people don't have the money, and they just have all their their college debt now, and maybe they're not they're not the ticket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, and, but what I do now, like that's a passion project for me. So I still, Mm -hmm. I mentor women. There's several young women that I connect with. Like I leave myself available to like mentor on LinkedIn. Um, So that to me now is the way I did some volunteering through like a a women's employment network here in Kansas city. So I still get to scratch that itch um, of serving that demographic of women. And um, it's actually the funny story too, about why that came about was I was the director of sales for a digital ad agency and we went to a career fair And frankly, Keith, I was just pissed off at the difference between the way young men and young women presented themselves. That's actually where it really came from. I was just like, is this what we're teaching our girls today? Because this is not okay. Like it was, I was, and then from a hiring perspective, I was like, well, who am I going to hire? And based off of this, like, this is why the glass ceilings exist. This is why men are making more money money than women. And I want to change that. And so, you know, I I change that in how I compensate my team now and the women that work for me. But for me, it is really changing that idea of this, this is why, you know? Um, So that's actually how the whole thing kind of came about to begin with was I was like, this, this, this is a problem. Um, And this is keeping women from getting the jobs that they want to get. And it, I, I just, and I know colleges and universities, I guess, aren't offering that type of service. And so teaching just like confidence and eye contact and appropriate attire and just professionalism in general, right? I would have dudes approach the table and they would shake my hand and, hey, my name is such and such. This is what I want to do, you know? And I, le- I legitimately had a girl tell me that she just wanted her first big girl job in marketing. That's what I want. It's just my first big girl job in marketing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is not okay. So that's actually where it came from. I was like, no, 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 no. This is not how we are raising women today. So that's, I think, probably where the, the need to serve women came into play too, which I saw the difference. Yeah, there is a difference. I, I had um, the, the privilege of doing a, uh, if I fell into this, I was doing some corporate work for a, an AI company out here in, in, uh, in uh, Los Angeles. And they had, um, part of what they did was they did a pretty decent um internship program and they they became it, that type of work has it's very competitive uh for the interns in the college uh, communities because they need the complete brainiacs involved and and right. um so i did this re- they said are you i don't know if you'd even be interested i did this recruiting video so i of course overproduced it and but because it was interesting to me it was interesting so we we had 21 of these kids come in and i, I you know i made this sort of a pretty cool artsy artsy video with them but it's all about their personalities and but just the idea like you know we take a snapshot of of what they look like and and what we were talking about before is like those those uh you know the decision to quit the volleyball team Mm -hmm. you know that's a young a young person decision and so these these people are in college and they're Mm -hmm. like they have their whole life in front of them and what do they wear to work? What? Do, how is this whole generation coming? How are the girls and the and the guys? How are they presenting themselves? How are they getting along? Um, 
it was eye opening. It was That's it was tough. quite revealing, and you know some of those people can kind of write their own ticket if they behave themselves, and okay. then uh, you know there may be some of these really really qualified people that. Uh, you know, need that help, need the help to like that you're offering. And, and, you know, I think that, you know, selling, uh, you know, get, uh, getting a job is, is, is sales, you know, oh, it's, it's marketing and, uh, you know, it's, it's changed that whole process and that whole uh, art form has changed in the last 30 years for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, well, I, uh, I would love for you to, uh, let us know what's going on with you. If you'd like to tell us anything that's happening, uh, like right now for you or coming up and how we can find you and everything like that. And of course you'll send me some links if we want to put this in the, in the replay, uh, postings and things like that. Sure. What's Absolutely. going on? So what is going on? We are, um, so you can always come hang out in my Facebook group. That's my favorite place to hang out. It's Ambitious Women Entrepreneurs Mastering Sales Skills. Um, we do welcome men into our group. Um, I always tell people a niche when it comes to marketing, it's just marketing. Doesn't mean I can't serve men. It doesn't mean that the content in my group isn't awesome. Um, so, you know, I, I come on in as long as you behave yourself, male or female, you can stay. If not, I'll kick you out. Uh, <laughs> so um, feel free to come hang out there. Uh, what we're doing right now is, is a really cool kind of um, webinar our series about the three shifts to go from employee to entrepreneur. Um, so that is what we are working on. We've got actually three of those we are doing in the month of October, where we're really going to drill down into, you know, the habits, um, the skills, um, and the mindset of, of entrepreneurs, because it's different. Because again, we don't we don't teach that, right? There's a lot of skills we don't teach in the corporate world. And so then when we decide we want to leave that corporate world, we've got this skill set, but we don't necessarily have um, the other the mindset and skill set needed to really make business decisions and to think like a business owner and to run sales conversations like a business owner, um, and to commit to our time and our schedule and, and all those things like a business owner. So um, I will definitely make sure you get a link for that. Because uh, like I said, we're doing that a couple of times in October. Um, and then if Instagram is your jam. You can follow us at Uncensored Sales. Um, we hang out over there. We spend more time on Facebook than Instagram these days, but um, but you can definitely follow along if you'd like. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thank mm -hmm. you for your time today. I, I can't, can't tell you how excited I was that you wanted to come on our, our show, and um, and we did it. I was a little yeah. nervous. I was nervous. <laughs> I think I told you that I, I got to start. I got to pick it up a little bit because Ryan's well, Ryan's Stop. watching. <laughs> no, I'm super excited. I thought it was, you know, really fun. Uh, the opportunity to be able to get to connect with you and get to know you like, again, when you and I connect, I'm usually teaching. And so uh, it's kind of fun to hear your story and even the stuff you've shared on social media about, you know, your film career and I just really fascinating. So thank you for the opportunity um, to be here and to serve you and your audience. Well, great. So this will be out and, and we'll, we'll share this. This will be out as, as far reaching as we can make it. And um, so I will uh, thank you, Ryan. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, Keith Salmon. This is the million dollar story series. And you can always find me. I am the CEO of Keith Salmon coaching. And I have a Facebook group myself called the million dollar story ninjas. And that's where we hang out. And we find about find out about your million dollar story and how you can use that story to change the world. And, uh, but we'll start with finding it and owning it. That's the light bulb moment for me. When you own your story, then you can, you can uh, create a belief system for yourself and your entrepreneurship and wherever you are in that journey. So, uh, thanks again, Ryan, Ryan yeah. Dowdy, uh, coming from Kansas city. I'm in Santa Monica. Um, I'm kind of childish when it comes to that because, you know, when we talked mm -hmm. about, uh, you talking to, you know, New Zealand or it was it New Zealand. And, and um, uh, you know, I, I made a goal of talking to all the continents and I'm only missing Antarctica right now. So if anybody's listening from Antarctica, I want to have you on the show. So, we love that. That's so fun. <laughs> so, well, thanks again, Keith. Okay, Ryan. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.